Hello everyone and welcome to a new video from your Overwatch. I'm Eddie the Chump and today we'll be going through our essential top tips for newer players. Whether it be on a free weekend or a holiday, if you've just got the game and want to get ahead, these 10 things will help you get to grips with Overwatch. Number one, set personal settings. Okay, so the absolute first thing you should do is get all your personal settings configured. If you're coming from other games, you might have a set sensitivity that you're practiced on or a crosshair that you're very used to. There are tools on the internet that will help you convert, say, your Counter-Strike sensitivity into an Overwatch equivalent. Maintaining sensitivities across games will help you massively as one of the worst things you can do for your aim is to constantly swap between a lower and a faster setting. Outside of that, there are a few options you want to check out. One is having the kill feed set to show up. There is no radar in Overwatch, so knowing when your team is up or down in a fight isn't easy. Thankfully, if you turn the kill feed on, you should be able to better understand the flow of a match. And finally, there's crosshairs. Now, we actually made a video about this and I'll link it here. In that video, I explained the logic behind why different crosshairs are the way they are. I suggest watching that before you make any firm decisions, but be aware, you can set individual crosshairs for individual heroes in Overwatch, so take some time to get comfortable. What hero should you learn to play? Who you should pick to learn first is actually a harder decision than you might think. Most people immediately think to pick a damage hero, as they're the heroes with the most obvious impact roles, and snipers are quite common as people's first choice. However, if this is your first hero shooter, you might need to learn a selection of heroes that teach you more about the game than just straight up damage dealing. The two heroes that I feel are not only mechanically easy, but will teach you the fundamentals of the game the quickest are Lucio and Winston. One is a healer and a hero who maintains team momentum with speed boosts, and the other is an initiator, trading raw damage for cleave damage on multiple targets at once, and fantastic mobility to harass the other team's healers and fragile backlines. Both of these heroes will give you different perspectives of Overwatch and help you develop your game sense. Now if you want to go further, there are heroes that are so crucial to how the game plays that we assign them the meta hero status. We made a video on this subject and it's available here. Understanding hero value and when to swap. The concept of hero value is twofold. Firstly, how much potential value a hero can have in any specific situation, and secondly, how much you as the player is capable of extracting from a hero. There are some heroes in Overwatch that have very specific jobs or roles, and because of that their applicability is more limited than others. Your ability to do that job defines how much value you're extracting from them. So let's take Widowmaker, a hero that has a lot of value locked into the high mechanical skill she requires to hit headshots consistently. Her value as a hero is limited to eliminations and not much else. An early pick with her on a attack can give your team a massive advantage in a team fight. But if you're playing her, not hitting your shots and essentially making your team play 5v6 every fight, you're essentially throwing the game. High damage impact heroes like Widow exist on that knife edge of impact and irrelevancy. Knowing when to swap off a hero that isn't working is one of the most vital skills a player needs to become successful. Genji is another hero who can either carry a game or do nothing but feed. He's great at eliminating enemy squishies like healers and DPS in their enemy backline, but if a team is overloaded with tanks, Tanks, for example, he can provide no value to his team whatsoever as he's ineffective against them. As the player, you have to be self-analytical and try and pick the best hero for the job that needs doing, and not just the ones that you prefer or are accustomed to. If you don't, you will limit yourself and the value you can offer your team. Team compositions. Overwatch can allow for many interesting comps, especially at lower levels of play when you're starting out. Everybody is new, so you don't have to be meta. Just try to combine synergies. If you don't know what that means, a synergy is when two hero skill sets and play styles complement each other. Genji and Winston, for example, are both used to dive and disrupt the enemy team's vulnerable backlines. They both have high mobility, and when combined, they can be lethal. Winston can initiate into a backline, drop a shield, and begin hitting multiple targets at the same time with his Tesla cannon. Genji can then follow and use his focus damage to finish off what Winston has begun damaging. That complementary interplay is called a synergy, and there are plenty available to you. Another would be Farah and Mercy, commonly referred to as Pharmacy. Mercy can follow Farah into the air and hover with her, keeping her alive and boosting her damage. At first, instead of trying to solve every problem at once, get a sense of what heroes work well together and go from there. We have many guides available to you about synergy, and I'll link one here for you to explore. Medals don't matter. One of the hardest things to get over and let go of when you first start playing Overwatch is the way the stats work. If you're playing a damage hero like Hanzo and you use the medal system in a game to measure your own performance, you could be misled into thinking you're doing a great job when in fact you're not. Medals like damage and elimination seem fairly straightforward, right? Well, not really, because you could be getting trash damage or trash eliminations. So how can you learn to tell the difference? Well, for damage, that's actually quite easy. Shooting shields like Reinhardt's adds to 
to your damage stat. So be aware if you're just shooting that and nothing else, you're not doing a whole lot, especially if you're taking a DPS hero. There's also the issue of timing, or when you're doing damage and getting eliminations. Overwatch is a game that revolves around 6v6 teamfights. Getting eliminations in a full fight is high value. Getting elims when you or your team are not grouping up properly, or while running away to do that, don't mean as much. The purpose of getting elims is not to get medals, it's to swing a fight at the right place at the right time. To that purpose, you should mostly ignore stats and measure your success on whether you're winning or not. Just because you have gold medals and elims as Junkrat doesn't mean you're doing well. You, as a DPS, should have those medals anyway. If your team is losing, then maybe, despite the medals, you're not killing the right things at the right time. Understanding win conditions. There's a concept new players often struggle with and that's this. When capturing objectives, if your team loses a fight but you remain on it and fruitlessly try to play the objective, you're not actually doing what it takes to win. What's required is different in each game mode, but it mostly comes down to this. You need to fight as a six and wipe the enemy team. The more times you group as a team and fight at full strength, the more chances you get to capture the objective or move the payload to the next checkpoint. The desire to play the objective can lead to teams splitting or trickling in one by one. This will make you lose. We understand that might be somewhat counterintuitive, to not go in, to not try and get the point immediately, but it really is the case that if you fight under strength, you will lose the majority of the time grouping properly. Our last point leads into this one. Fighting alone or under strength is a recipe for heavy losses. Overwatch is a team game and as such requires team play. The act of grouping quite often includes running away or even dying on purpose to hook up with the rest of your team. Yes I said that. Dying on purpose is a good thing in certain situations. Even jumping off the map. Fight as a team or not at all. Resist peeking or poking on your own. If you get caught out doing that, you've instantly given your team the disadvantage and fed the enemy ultimates. The less you do, this the better. Proper grouping is so important, pro teams have been known to jump off the map en masse once a teammate has died early to start afresh. Focus fire. This is a topic we've made plenty of more in-depth videos about, and I'll link one here. But to summarize quickly, efficient focus fire is when your entire team shoots the same thing, either because it's near death or because it's a priority target. Enemy healers and DPS are critical to their chances of beating you. So if your team focuses their fire and eliminates them quickly, you stand a much better chance of winning the engagement. Likewise, if a main tank like Rhine is already on low health in front of you, you can end a team's push against you by focusing it down. Their team will no longer have shielding so their squishies are then vulnerable. Who and what to focus as a team depends on the situation, but know that if nothing is dying on the enemy team, your team's focus fire is probably lacking. Ultimate usage. This is an incredibly in-depth subject, so to not overcomplicate things, here are a couple of quick tips. Panic ultimates, either to keep yourself alive or when heavily down in a fight, are generally a waste. Ultimates can have incredible value on their own or when combined for combos and are one of the ways that your team can swing a fight in their favour. If you waste your ultimates and the other team doesn't, you will lose. Some ultimates are devastating but take a long time to charge. Zarya's Graviton is a great example. This can be comboed with many other ults to completely wipe a team. Zarya into Hanzo's Dragon Arrow is a very strong combo. Hanzo will charge his quicker if he's played well, but you should hold it until Zarya can set him up. When used individually, they're nowhere near as strong as in this combo. On the healer side, Zen's Transcendence is incredibly powerful if used to counter an ult stack against you, but newer players might be tempted to use it to keep themselves alive. This is usually a mistake. It's better to just eat the death as you dying alone isn't as bad as your whole team getting wiped by a Graviton into a Genji Dragonblade. When to die or disengage. As I mentioned before, there are times when you need to be able to recognize that a fight is lost and either disengage, and I mean right out of harm's way, no peeking or poking, or die on purpose to group up with your team. It's absolutely essential that as a new player you grasp this concept. You will win games on the strength of your full team fight prowess. In Individual heroics that might have carried you in other games are far less viable in Overwatch. You cannot simply frag out and be okay. At higher levels you will get mercilessly punished for not fighting as a team. So if you're down in a fight by a lot, that is the time to either die or disengage. And there are a few subtleties here. If you attempt to evade and get killed, you will have given the enemy ult charge. This is why you can see pros jumping off the map. The goal is to respawn with your team and rob the enemy of any ultimate advantage. If you can run, do so. If you can't, jump off the map, and if you can't do that, eat the death as quickly as possible. Remember, a team that fights together, wins together. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, please don't forget to leave a like. If you want us to cover anything specific, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below. Also, please follow the Your Overwatch Twitter, it's where you can find updates about new videos and streams. I've been Eddie the Chump, and until next time!